I am blown away by how many people are here this evening. It's amazing, and I know there's people in the overflow room, that when, as a board, you decide to try and do something that reflects the realities of the society in which we are living in currently, and in which our kids will soon occupy and be the ones working for our benefit, that this is the result. This is a show of interest that I think has uh, surprised all of us. And I want to thank each and every one of you coming in this evening. And uh, I'm even more surprised that with the snow out there, you already made it. And for those, those people that have said uh, that this is pretty early in November, those people that say climate change is not a real thing, go outside and the kids that graduate from this school will once and all prove to the cynic that climate change is the same. So, this, science is near and dear to my heart. I have a Bachelor of Science and I was a math and science teacher in the Halton District School Board. Two sons, the younger one I like much better because he's doing a Bachelor of Science, the older one did business, so I don't talk to him very well. <laughs> but this is a, this concept that we're doing, and I know there are other schools in the province doing um, I step. But I don't know of another school in the entire province that's doing I step. They're just doing STEM. We've added innovation in here. We need, as a country, as a province, as a community, and our students, we need innovation, we need ingenuity, we need creativity, and we need to apply it to science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. We need to do it. This country will be one of the leaders. We're a middle power as a country. But well, we punch way above our weight, and we need to continue to do that, and we need to continue to do so, and we will do so by the students that graduate from this program. So I want to thank everybody involved in getting this up and running. I know we haven't actually started, we won't be starting until September, but I, I want to thank everybody, particularly our advisory board, the student advisory board, that's giving us fantastic advice on how to support our students and get this going. This will be a true success story of the Halton District School Board, and maybe even more importantly, a model for us to follow around the rest of the board. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for all the shot community for supporting this and helping us, and particularly the staff who have sort of embraced this and will make this one of the greatest, uh, greatest vehicles for community development, country development, that we have to be able to do in Halton. This is America in 1900. This is a car in 1900. And a phone. And a high school. This is America in 1950. And a car. And a phone. And a high school. This is today. A car. A phone. A high school. Whoa. Back up. So cars are now this. And phones are now this. But high schools are still that. American high schools are based on the same model, and it's been over a hundred years. Wow, that's a long time. But why? In 1900, it made sense for high schools to prepare students for that. But in 2017, shouldn't they be preparing students for this, and this, and even this? So why are we still granting diplomas based on the time a student spends in a seat? Why are we still using the Carnegie unit? which was developed in 1906 and says the formula for learning is four years sitting at a desk multiplied by one subject taught at a time equals students ready for the future? If students are learning differently and people are working differently, how do we collectively need to change? If we want our students to be change makers, how do we teach differently? And what do we teach differently? We need to listen to the students, so we ask them. Last year, as part of this process, we sampled grade 10 students from all areas of the board in essential, applied, and academic pathways. This is what they told us. If we learn about history, why don't we learn about the future? Many of our subjects are outdated and look backwards rather than to our future. The real world, outside of school, sounds so exciting and full of opportunities to be creative, but that feels so far away from where we are. As shared at our board's Parent Involvement Committee conference by keynote Amber Mack, 
The world has never moved this quickly and will never again move this slowly. Learning how to learn is a critical skill that will support students in navigating our ever-changing world. For the adults in the room, consider how you found information when you were in high school. Now you Google it. Well, guess what? Our students don't Google. They search for information on YouTube, teaching themselves so many things. Our students also were asked, what skills do we want to develop? They responded, we need help figuring out our natural skills. Why do we talk about future like it's so far away? We are the future and need to learn skills for the future now. Students also responded to this question, in my ideal school, I would. And as you'll notice, there are several responses that they gave us. Things like having access to technology, developing their leadership and communication skills, stop memorizing information and learn how to do. As shared in the video clip and from what we are hearing from our students, we know school has the potential to further develop innovative thinkers and contributing global citizens. The acronym ISTEM stands for Innovation Through Science, Technology, Engineering and Math. Innovation is the driver. In iSTEM, students will be engaged in meaningful STEM learning opportunities to further develop the skills and abilities needed to become creative, critical thinkers, discoverers, entrepreneurs, problem solvers, and contributing citizens. We know the teenagers of today are more aware of economic, social, and environmental issues and think about solving them. Let's face it, we want students to run to school. The iSTEM students won't be asked, what do you want to be? They will be asked, what problem do you want to solve? The emergence of new technologies is disrupting how businesses operate and interact with their customers, how people work in the careers they pursue, and even how citizens relate to their governments. More and more, personal and national success depends on effective science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. As you watch this video, consider the skills and competencies our students will need.
These are referred to as global competencies and are identified in the iSTEM brochure. The video clip we just watched highlights our rapidly changing world. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are redefining how we work and live. There is an increasing need to consider the social impact of our innovation in a globalized world. Living in a world of change, we must navigate a path that allows us to prosper from evolving science, technology, and innovation, while also being aware of the human dimension, fostering social and cultural cohesion. Developing these skills and competencies are key in iSTEM learning. iSTEM reflects the research about what our students will need for the future. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, also referred to as the OECD, has identified three key forces shaping the future of work that we should be considering as we prepare our students for the future. First, technological change. Technological advances in the areas of machine learning, artificial intelligence, sensors, and data have created entirely new ways of getting work done. While artificial intelligence will radically alter how work gets done and who does it, the technology's larger impact will be in complementing and augmenting human capabilities, not replacing them. This is why global competencies in iSTEM are critical. Second, shifting demographics. Demographic changes are shifting the composition of the global workforce. In most places, people are living longer than ever, and overall the populations are becoming both older and younger, with individual nations becoming more diverse. Learning how to learn will be key for our students as they navigate the world of work. Accelerating globalization. Largely thanks to digital technologies, the ability to find and access people and resources when and as needed is making the world a much smaller place. Data currently shows that Canadian students travel less than students in the United States. Businesses are finding it difficult to find people who can go to other cultures who can work in these cultures, beyond the U.S. and Europe. The OECD suggests that we must prepare young people for the jobs of the future by ensuring that they are equipped with the right type of skills to successfully navigate the ever-changing world. Research with respect to STEM education has been key in the development of iSTEM and seeking advisory partners. Canada 2067 is a national initiative to shape the future of STEM learning. In 2017, Canada 2067 was launched to catalyze a national discussion about the future of STEM education to help young Canadians develop the full range of skills needed to navigate an increasingly complex world and have equal opportunity to study and pursue diverse career paths. They traveled across the country and talked to over a thousand grade 9 and 10 students. These 10 key insights from students mirror much of what our students have told us and are helping to develop iSTEM. We are proud to be working with Canada 2067 as a program development and advisory partner. The next section of this presentation will examine the brochure. The next few slides will provide an overview of the iSTEM program. This September will be the first year of the program beginning with grade 9 students. Each subsequent year a grade will be added. Grade 9 and 10 provide an emphasis on innovation to address local issues. In Grade 9, students will be involved in the Engineer's Toolkit. This theme will permeate through the four Grade 9 STEM subjects, Math, Science, Geography, and Tech Design. We are currently working with McMaster, Mohawk, and Engineers of Tomorrow in program design with respect to skills related to engineering design and design thinking. Currently, Grade 9 stu students are addressing a local issue in the ravine on the Aldershot property. Students have been presented a problem by the City of Burlington regarding erosion and are working with Halton Conservation, the City of Burlington, and local engineers using technologies such as drones and GIS. In Grade 10, students will be exposed to an Entrepreneur's Toolkit. Students in iSTEM will take Grade 10 Civics and Careers class in school rather than online. In grades 11 and 12, students look at global issues framed in the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, leading to an exhibition of student work. Grade 11 and 12 will focus on the Global Innovators Toolkit. We are working with staff, advisory members, and community partners to develop the Engineers Toolkit, Entrepreneurs Toolkit, and Global Innovators Toolkit. Students in iSTEM will take 13 compulsory courses over four years, leading to an iSTEM certificate upon graduation. 
We are currently exploring different timetable structures unique to iSTEM, and students in iSTEM will be strategically timetabled to allow for interdisciplinary learning opportunities. iSTEM students and learning community partners work together so all students engage in experiential learning opportunities with community partners every year. This will culminate in their senior years where they will take interdisciplinary studies course. This unique course will incorporate learning framed in the UN Sustainable Development Goals to address global issues in partnership and mentorship with post-secondary institutions, community, and the workplace, and culminate in a public exhibition of work. We are fortunate this year to have the time to develop the program and unique opportunities for staff and student learning. These include working with Dr. Robert Fleisick and Dr. Liz Hassan from McMaster University. Staff are attending first-year engineering classes at McMaster that are focused on design thinking. At a recent professional development day for staff, Dr. Fleisick and Dr. Hassan facilitated a full day of learning with design thinking. Working with, we are also working with Rotman iThink on integrative thinking and exploring new technologies. Additional students will mean additional staffing will be required for the school. We are excited to host an upcoming staff open house. There's lots of excitement from our teaching community. Application forms are now available online. They're due January 19th, 2019. There are two options. You may mail them in at the address provided on the application or email it. Directions are on the form. By February 8th, 2018, you will receive status regarding your application. As part of the application, a copy of the Grade 8 Progress Report and a Grade 7 Report Card are to be submitted. Personalized learning is key to student engagement. The responses to the questions in the student application packages will help frame some of the learning opportunities in the program. We want students to drive the program. Identifying areas of student interest also helps frame opportunities for learning outside of the school and working with mentors in a variety of innovation and STEM areas. In the spring of 2018, the Halton District School Board made a commitment of approximately $1.5 million for facility enhancements at Aldershot for iSTEM. We will be working with an architect to design multiple spaces in the school and will draw upon our school board staff and experts in the area of innovation to design these spaces. Construction will be starting in semester two of the 2018-2019 school year with completion of the work for students entering the program in September 2019. We have been out exploring different spaces. These include Mohawk's new Joyce Centre for Partnerships and Innovation, the Forge at McMaster Innovation Park, science facilities used for McMaster's Interdisciplinary Science Program, Tech Place in Burlington, and the Edge at Sheridan College, and are building our iSTEM vision of these spaces with school staff, board staff, and those involved in the design of the spaces shown. These aren't the classrooms of old. Currently at Aldershot, we have great learning environments and resources. This slide shows current learning environments at Aldershot High School. The top left shows one of our modern science labs. Classrooms have updated furniture to allow for flexible learning environments. Our new 3D printer will be part of the renovated innovation application space. In recognition of the focus of STEM, newly purchased science equipment will allow for more sophisticated experiments such as gas discharge tubes and a spectrometer for use in physics, chemistry and biology. We are also working with industry partners to identify learning resources for students in the fields of engineering, technology, biotechnology, and information technology. If you are looking for further information on iSTEM, the iSTEM website has a Frequently Asked Questions section. You can email us at iSTEM at hdsb.ca. You can follow us on Twitter at iSTEM underscore hdsb. This slide shows some of the development ad advisory partners that are also indicated on your brochure. We would like to express our extreme gratitude for the work and the commitment by these partners, as well as others that are not listed on here. We are excited to be working with people outside of the school system in developing the best program for students. We are fortunate to have some of our advisory partners and community partners on the panel today. I'd like to introduce these people. Dr. Robert Fleisig, 
Dr. Fleisig holds a Bachelor of Science, Master's and PhD in Mechanical Engineering from McMaster University. As an Associate Professor with the W. Booth School of Engineering Practice and Technology, Dr. Fleisig believes that being a good engineer means understanding and empathizing with others. Through his teaching, he encourages students to engage in the community and become more creative and compassionate engineers. In his graduate teaching, students work with university researchers, hospitals, and local business to identify important problems in health and sustainability, to design, prototype, and implement innovative solutions that are meaningful to the community and have an economic impact. Last month, Dr. Fleisig was named one of Ontario's most outstanding university teachers by the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations. As an iSTEM advisor, Dr. Fleisig has provided Aldershot staff with an opportunity to attend first-year engineering lectures at McMaster and facilitated a full-day workshop with his colleague Dr. Liz Hassan on design thinking. George Miltenberg George holds a Master of Business Administration and Engineering degree specializing in mechanical engineering from McMaster University. He has worked in industry including roles as Vice President of Manufacturing for Danier Leather and Director of Operations for shade matic He brings this experience to Mohawk College where he has worked as a Professor of Mechanical Engineering Technology and is currently the Associate Dean of Engineering Technology for Schools of Mechanical, Chemical, Biotechnology, Environmental, Aviation, and Non-Destructive Evaluation. At the Corridor Innovation Summit this year, George spoke to the need of manufacturing companies to adopt automation and continually strive to increase productivity. He envisions a Team Canada approach to manufacturing, where there is much to be gained by sharing best practices. He is keenly aware of the role education plays in filling the labour shortage in this area. More importantly, George sees graduates bringing insight in what the future might be, encouraging automation and smart manufacturing techniques to any company. Megan Cates. Dr. Chad Harvey, one of our iSTEM advisors for McMaster's Integrated Science Program, was not able to be here this evening. Without hesitation, he asked Megan to jump in. Megan is a third-year undergraduate student in the Integrated Science Program with a concentration in biochemistry at McMaster University. She has always been passionate about science. In high school, Megan loved when the elements of courses she took crossed over and could apply what she learned in one discipline to another. When she heard about McMaster's Integrated Science Program, she was hooked. In addition to passions in biochemistry and molecular biology, Megan is an avid writer and musician. This is something she has brought to the Integrated Science Program, co-running a creative magazine. She is also a teaching assistant for the ISI Drug Discovery Model, is part of the ISI Mentoring Program, and has been actively involved in Let's Talk Science Program, which teaches science to classes in the community. Megan has her sights set on the goal of becoming a professor in biochemistry or molecular biology. Steve Leach. Steve holds a Bachelor of Applied Science in Engineering Chemistry from Queen's University and a law degree from Osgoode Hall Law School. As a partner at Rideout and Maybe, Steve specializes in intellectual property law. Steve is a valued member of the iSTEM Advisory Group, bringing an informed perspective to entrepreneurship, innovation, and technology. He is the president of TechLink, where ideas at varying stages of development are exchanged between inventors, promoters, developers, and distributors through TechLink's Innovation Exchange. Steve also serves as the chair of the Innovation Council for Queen's University Department of Chemistry and is a founding member of the Hamilton Innovation Factory. Dr. Lotfi Belkir. Dr. Belkir has a Bachelor of Science in Physics with a Master's Qualification in Laser Physics and Management of Technology. He also holds a PhD in Physics, but that's not all. He has worked in technical and managerial roles in the Xerox Venture Lab in California, leaving to start his own company in Silicon Valley. This company developed the world's first and fastest automated book scanner. The company received one of the most coveted innovation awards in the world the Popular Science Best of What's New Award, and was ranked by Inc. 500 Magazine as one of the fastest growing companies in the U.S. two years in a row. Recognized globally for his work, Dr. Belkir was a keynote speaker at the International Conference for Entrepreneurship, 
Innovation and Regional Development last month in Qatar. The topic he shared was sustainable entrepreneurship, innovating a carbon-free economy in a thriving planet. We are fortunate to have Dr. Belkir as an iSTEM advisor who brings the lens of researcher, teacher, innovator, entrepreneur, and business leader to the team. This question is for all the panelists. Thank you for offering your time and expertise this evening. What excites you most about the iSTEM program coming to Aldershot? So I've been involved in teaching uh, design thinking, units and design, product design, engine design, and so forth for over 10 years, uh, almost entirely at the undergraduate and graduate levels of the university. And this is really the first time I've seen this happening at a high school level. Uh, I've seen my kids go through high school and involved in STEM in various ways. Uh, and just in recent years, there's been an inkling about innovation in a couple of ways. Uh, there's an insert uh, uh, award called the Horizon Award. Uh, which is now geared towards uh, innovation, and there's also programs like SHAD, uh, summer program. But this is really something quite unique, and I'm really excited to be working with some of the teachers here, the teachers I've worked with at the Commandus, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see what we can do with this program. I'm, I'm excited to see high school curriculum taught in a new way. Um, I'm excited to see all their shot high school on the map. Um, this is the biggest thing since the school. But I'm, I'm most excited to see young women in STEM before biases uh, steer them away. I believe that there are misconceptions in Canada, particularly, that prevent a lot of women from enjoying careers in science and technology. And doesn't mean boys only. Um, I'm excited to see how young women embrace this program and how they use technology um, for themselves. Stop it! I don't have nearly the same expertise or acclaim as any of the panelists here now, but I'm a little bit closer to the high school age. I know what it's like to be right here right now. And I can tell you, I didn't have this in high school. And that is so exciting for me that this exists. This is a thing. This is something that I'm doing in university. And I'm loving it, not for the content, not for the projects, although those are fantastic. I love it for the like-minded people who I get to engage with, the ideas we get to discuss, and all of the interesting things that I get to pursue that are something that interests me. It's not just something that's being taught. It's I get to pursue whatever I'm interested in. And that's fascinating to do it at a high school level. Thank you, Megan. Any big questions? My dad fixed the computers inside the lower end. Um, and he walked inside the mail. And the job he had before that was uh, sweeping uh, metal shavings off the floor of a machine shop. He got his training through correspondence courses. Those days don't exist anymore. The world's a lot more complex. And I'm really excited to give the students a chance, especially kids that stand now, so they can make a difference in their, uh, in their communities sooner rather than later. So what excites me? Um, I, I kind of come to it with a different thing. Uh, I think what excites me about it is that it's a bold move that's realizing that times have changed and changed rapidly. And the way they've changed, that's, I think, one of the key insights that the ice Center can bring. Uh, when you think about it, universities today are organized to essentially prepare our children for jobs. They're there essentially they're organized to serve the industrial economy that we've built since the last 200 years. And in that industrial economy, we essentially have been following Adam Smith's idea that specialization is good and subspecialization is bad. But like Steve pointed out, today's problems are a lot more complex and they need an interdisciplinary approach, what I call a transdisciplinary approach, which brings in the humanities, the social ills, uh, the sustainable development goals with the technical, the engineering, the scientific skills as well. And what I see in iSTEM in high school is not a specialization, but rather 
the preparation of the kids to have that STEM skills that would then later serve them to apply to very complex social problems. Because STEM qualifications, unless they're taught early on, they get harder and harder with time. And we know that our kids, if they don't learn physics and math in high school, they're going to shy away even further from it in universities. But in complex problems, whether they're social or human or political or technological problems, today we've reached a point where you need those mathematical and physics insights, at least at some level to be able to address the interdisciplinary nature of those problems. And so those STEM skills is what we need to sharpen the minds of our young kids to prepare them for whatever later they're going to absorb and decide to go to solve not technical problems, but real social and complex problems. And that's what we say. George, Steve, and Dr. Belkir. Let's talk about the term innovation. Each of you have been leaders in the innovation space. What excites you about the focus of innovation in a high school setting? People say that we have to teach the basics, but I, I tell you that we can't afford the time to learn the basics. When I was when I went to school, we had a set of encyclopedias in our house, and that's where I went to for, for most of my project work. Um, but now there's an app for that. So <laughs> I'm I'm I, let me share a, a, an example that is very recent. So in in September, I found an old piece of automation equipment that was built in 1990 and was decommissioned around 2005, and it was taught, used to, to teach automation to our students at Mohawk. So before throwing it out, I, I went to a class of students that were studying automation, and I asked who wanted to leave the class and instead of, or instead of studying, um, automation just work on fixing this piece of equipment for me. And everybody in the class put their hands up. So I said, well, that's too many students. So I took 10 of them and I put them on the equipment. And I told them that if they got it working, they would pass the course. If they had it working better than they knew, they would get an A in the course. And if they couldn't get it working, they would fail the course. <laughs> Still, everybody put their hands up. Halfway through the semester, with the a little bit of a help from the technician in the lab, they got that piece of equipment working. And it was working better than brand new. And I, so I called up the retired professor who taught that course, had him come in, and he got very nostalgic. Um, and he told me that the students clearly learned more about automation in that short period of time, then he was able to teach them in a semester over the 15 years that he taught them that equipment. That's what innovation is, and that's what um, learning, hopefully, in this type of program will give to students. Thank you. My answer is kind of like yours. What is what excites me about the program is its constraints. You talked about old tools, and I spent a lot of time in universities, and they have fantastic tools, and they deal with problems that are really sometimes quite obscure. Um, what I think is really great about focusing on innovation in a high school setting is that students are going to have, they're not going to have the best tools, and that's, that's the situation we're going to face in the workforce. So when they're on the workforce and they're dealing with old tools, and they still have that innovation mindset, they're going to be able to make it just right then and there. Um, anyways, that, that's what it's going to say. Thank you, Steve. So, I would have a quite different answer than my two fellow panelists about innovation. And so to me, uh, very often when you think of innovation, again, I think we're still in the old industrial mindset, where we imagine the scientist or engineer tinkering in the lab and inventing something cool or solving a technical problem that nobody has solved. And then we see a patent and a publication coming out and we think, wow, that is innovation. 
Uh, and to me, and to the W Bush School in general, we take actually a very different view of that. We call that invention. And invention is always a technical event. But innovation for us is, has nothing to do, in fact, or very little to do with inventing something new, but rather everything to do with creating social value using knowledge. And think about it. Today, IBM has a market value of about $100 billion. And IBM is known to have the most patents per year than any other company in the world. Facebook, on the other hand, which has not invented anything, has a market value of over $400 billion, which is four times more than IBM. And IBM alone has more patents than Facebook, Google, and Apple combined. So this tells us that Facebook, Apple, and Google have created much more value for society than IBM. And yet, they have invented much less. So we live, again, we are in a new age. It used to be that innovation was to make a product better, faster, cheaper, and add more features. But that time is gone. It used to be that patents and inventions and publications were a form of innovation. But that time is gone as well. Today we're in the knowledge economy. And the analogy I'd like to say is that think of knowledge as a deep and large ocean. And to have more patents and invention is to throw more buckets of water to that sea. What value does that create? Very little. In fact, more than 99% of patents today are not useful. The real innovation is not to add more water to the sea but to figure out how to manipulate that water to create waves. And it's those waves that make an impact and that creates value. It's those waves that are the innovation. So innovation today is not so much about inventing, but rather reimagining how to use the current sea of knowledge to create new value with more things. This question is for George and Megan. In Canada, by 2020, there will be a need to fill one million jobs by STEM-educated people, at least one in three jobs. The future of STEM is all the jobs around us. What got you hooked on the STEM field, and why is STEM learning important for students? Well, uh, I'm going to concentrate on why I think STEM learning is important for students. Without a doubt, education in any STEM program will prepare you for a career. Um, last week I was in Ottawa. I had a meeting with the um, Canadian manufacturers and exporters. And every manufacturer represented in the room was looking for graduates, um, technical graduates, everyone. Um, the federal government, there were ministers at this meeting, the federal government wants to see manufacturing double by 2030. Um, so the number of automation jobs alone is probably half of that total, that one million. I spent this afternoon at National Steel Car in, in Hamilton, and they can't install robots, they're, sorry, they're the largest, um, that's the largest factory to make rail cars in the world. And they can't install robots in their factory quick enough. So there are tons of jobs for STEM graduates. And that's only manufacturing, and there's so many other um, industries. But I think for this crowd, it's too early to think about jobs. Um, I think it's safe to say that any student who enjoys school will do well and anybody who does well in school will get a career. Um, as a parent, I want my child to be happy. And I think going to a school that they enjoy, um, will, they'll do well in and they'll be happy. I agree that happiness is one of the important motivators in school. If you're not happy with what you're doing, you're not going to try. But I say that the answer to both parts of the question for me is for, so sorry, uh, what got you hooked on STEM and why should students learn it is the same thing. 
STEM is not about the information. STEM isn't about the content you're learning at school. It's not about the everyday details. It's about a mindset. It's about learning how to learn. It's about a way to think of the problems, as been said before. It's about innovation, but it's also about thinking about a problem and not being taught how to solve it, but figuring it out by trial and error. We do all sorts of research projects in my program in every scientific discipline, and each of them has the same approach. You have to look for the information yourself. You have to figure out what it is you're interested in, and you have to pursue it. You have to look for the answers and put all your information together, and that's what got me hooked. I love solving puzzles. I love putting together and synthesizing information. And to me, that's one of the most incredible things about STEM is I get to come up with my own answers. I'm not necessarily taught all of them. Dr. Fleisig and George. One of the recommendations of Canada 2067 is to evolve post-secondary education entry requirements to recognize and value students who have engaged in innovative approaches to learning. What conversations are happening at Mohawk and McMaster with respect to this vision? How might iSTEM be advantageous for students and their post-secondary pursuits? Okay. So, at McMaster University in Engineering, uh, like here, we've been rethinking our curriculum recently, uh, involving a lot more innovation and hands-on elements in the curriculum that was traditionally very theoretical. So today we have a new program actually started this past year called Integrated Bio Biomedical Engineering that integrates multiple engineering courses the first year, introduces significant elements of design thinking and hands-on learning. And that's something that is going to be continuing in from first year up to fourth year. Similarly, we're looking at our other programs to do very much the same. So we're looking for students who are coming with additional capabilities beyond what they get in the STEM courses, innovation capabilities. So what we are doing now is we're also looking at ways of supporting iSTEM here at, uh, at uh, Aldershot. Uh, and when I spoke to our, our dean and associate dean about this, they were actually very excited about, about this program uh, and, and we're looking very much forward to sitting down with Terry at some time in the near future and see what we can do to help her out and help out I stand here at Older Show. I agree, Coral. George? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, what is being done here at Aldershot is making a lot of good noise at, at Mohawk College. And, um, so at Mohawk, we're comparing um, this program to our college. Um, the style of learning is very similar to Eng Tech at Mohawk. Um, so this is very similar to a college program, probably more similar to college than to regular high school. Um, many of our Mohawk grads go off on to university after finishing Mohawk. Um, students are, and our, I know that our students are prepared to dive right into university. I have a feeling that graduates from this program will similarly be ready to dive right in at university and they'll be ready to work on projects um, and they won't have to spend a, a year or two learning something first. Dr. Fleisig, Steve, and Dr. Belk here. Each of you has graciously offered your time to help us develop a new vision for learning. Could you please share your motivation in working with us? Well, I think that's pretty straightforward. I mean, this, this to me is the future of education. And I think McMaster University and I do want to be at the forefront of uh, new innovations in education. Thank you. My profession is a strange one. I get to help people protect their ideas through patents, which are great, by the way. Um, and, and I also, as I have a, eight patents myself. 
And as a lawyer, I get to help people create contracts that mitigate business risks, but I'm not qualified to give business advice. And so over the last 20 years or so, I've helped a lot of people get patents that, for ideas that didn't go anywhere. Um, my motivation for helping ISTAN is pretty selfish. I'd like to spend the last 15 years of my career uh, helping people that have sound business ideas and a reasonable chance of success. Dr. Bell here. So why I'm so happy to be working with um, at the high school level is, um, first of all, I'm a teacher at heart. I have quite a few kids of my own. And, um, and, and the way I see it is that the I STEM, for me, what's exciting the most about I STEM is the I before the STEM. And the I to me is all, you could as well replace innovation, the I for innovation as I for imagination. And when you think about it, our imagination does not grow as we go from high school to university to, to, to work, it actually only decreases. So if you want to catch our youth at their most imaginative, where they, where they still have their dreams that have not been affected or destroyed or shattered by having to specialize in something they're not interested, it's at the high school level. Maybe younger, but at the younger level, they would not be ready for all the toolkits that we need to teach them in science, technology, engineering, and math. So high school is that sweet spot where they're still full of imagination, full of dreams, full of aspirations and ambitions, and then equip them with the STEM tools that would actually enable them to turn those dreams and aspirations into reality as they go to the university. And that, to me, is something that's very lacking and something that uh, is potentially could be a game changer in the way we educate our children. I'd like to, uh, if you could join me in thanking the panel one more time for joining us this evening.